Welcome back to The Human Condition. If you're new here, this series explores the human experience through the metaphor of computer hardware, breaking things down one component at a time to expand self-awareness, emotional insight, and how we understand intelligence itself. In part one, we started with a power supply, the PSU, the energetic foundation of your system. It's your internal fuel line. Sleep, food, emotion, breath, all of it influences what you can output and what gets shut down when energy runs low. Today, we're moving into the CPU, the central processing unit. This is the part of the system responsible for thought, decision-making, and command execution. But like any processor, it has limits. Too much multitasking. Things freeze. Not enough cooling. You overheat. The goal isn't to max out performance. It's to understand how your system runs best and what happens when it gets pushed past capacity. Let's dive into the mind. This is component two, the CPU. When people talk about intelligence, they usually mean one thing, the brain. More specifically, the logical, analytical part of the brain, the part that solves problems, calculates answers, and organizes data. In computer terms, this is your CPU, your central processing unit. It's fast. It's efficient. It's sharp. And it's only part of the story. The CPU is the component responsible for language, planning, linear thinking, problem solving, decision making, calculating risks and rewards. This is the rational mind. And in many ways, it's the crown jewel of modern society. It helps us navigate complex systems, build technology, communicate ideas, and survive in high demand environments. But here's the problem. We've been taught to worship the CPU like it's the whole system. And when we do that, we end up asking our minds to carry everything, including the things it was never meant to hold. When the CPU gets overloaded, ever try to think your way through grief? Ever tried to logic your way out of burnout? Ever spiral into decision paralysis from overthinking every possible outcome? That's your CPU overheating. That's your mind trying to run software it wasn't designed to process. And just like a computer under strain, the result is predictable. Racing thoughts, restlessness, mental fatigue, perfectionism. Analysis paralysis, a growing fear that you're failing at being human. We don't call it a CPU problem, though. We call it anxiety. We call it burnout. We call it being stuck in your head. But in reality, it's a system misalignment. Your CPU is trying to run tasks meant for other components, like your emotional renderer GPU, your memory drives, or even your body. A healthy CPU knows its role. It doesn't micromanage your feelings. It doesn't block your creativity with logic gates. It doesn't panic when something can't be explained. Instead, it works with the other components. It turns feelings into language. It builds structure for intuition to flow through. It makes space for emotion instead of silencing it. It interprets memory rather than being ruled by it. That's when logic becomes wisdom. That's when intelligence becomes integrated. Reframing the CPU. You are not your thoughts. You are not the noise in your head. You are the system beneath the processing, the one watching the thoughts, not drowning in them. When you start to understand your CPU not as the king, but as the translator, you free yourself from the need to think your way into peace. Peace isn't a math problem. It's a full system alignment. Final thought on component two. Your mind is powerful, but it was never meant to carry the entire load. Logic is not the throne. It's the support beam. Let it do what it does best and give the rest of your system room to breathe. If you made it to the end, thank you. My goal with this series is to explore the human condition through metaphor, not to simplify the mind, but to help make it more understandable, piece by piece, one component at a time. In the next episode, we'll move into the GPU, the graphics processing unit. Think of it as your perception engine, how you process visual information, construct imagery, and shape the reality you see and project outward. If this episode resonated with you, and you'd like to help more people find it, consider giving it a like or subscribing. I've never asked before, but I believe in this message. And if you do too, spreading it helps more than you think. Thanks for being here. See you in part three.